Well, what are you going to do about this gentleman that's calling in? Thank you, Your Honor. We would ask uh, Tom Edwards to take the witness in. All right. Why are we taking him out of work? Why are we taking him out of work? Um, Mr. Edwards, we do have a, a agreement, I believe, an agreement by counsel that Mr. Edwards is an active member of the Florida Bar and has a, a limited ability. He uh, owns 900 acres that are affected. So he's an affected landowner. Okay. We really appreciate the opportunity to bring him in here. Judge, I, I'm Tom today. Edwards, and I appreciate both you and counsel allowing me to go out of order. I do have uh, pre existing conflicts for the rest of the week. Raise right hand, please. Yes. I swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes, sir. State your name for the record. Thomas S. Edwards, Jr. All right, Mr. Ross, please make Thank you. Um, Mr. Edwards, where is your personal residence at this time? My personal residence is in Jacksonville, Florida. Right. And you own land anywhere else in Florida? Yes, sir, I do. And where is that, sir? I own more than one parcel, but in particular yeah. related to this uh, to this uh, matter, uh, I own between 900 and 1,000 acres in Swanee County. My property abuts the Swanee River State Park, and I have between two and two and a half miles of river frontage on the Swanee River. The pipeline that is proposed uh, is going to cross the river. Your Honor, can we just ask that the wind does not refer to documents unless they're being proffered as an exhibit or being used for some purpose by the attorney asking questions? Why don't you put that down until you need it? Yes, sir. It's, it, what I was finding is a map so I could demonstrate where my property is in relation to the pipeline. But we'll, we'll bring that up unless you Good. need it to. Uh, it, yes, it, it, it would assist in the judge understanding uh, where my property is in relation to the pipeline. The, the pipeline will cross from the Swanee River State Park. It goes underground on the Swanee River State Park, goes under the Swanee River, and comes above ground on my property, and will then track the property line on my property between the Swanee River State State Park and my property, so it is tracking my southern border with the Swanee River State Park, and I can show that to you if it would be of assistance. Okay, well, we have a, a blow-up matter that we could uh, we'd like to introduce uh, at some point. I was going to uh, ask you a few more questions just before we get there. But, um, uh, so, if you will, so have you had uh, contact with the uh, Division of Environmental Protection with regard to the proposed Sable Trail transmission I, pipeline? I've had extensive, or attempted to have extensive contact with Sable Trail, with the Department of Environmental Protection, the Florida Department of Environmental Protection, and FERC, and. Uh, have had great frustrations with all of them. When did you begin that matter of contact? I, I can't give you the exact date, but I was given notice of Sable Trail's filing with the Department of Environmental Protection at some point after I'd already been involved in dealing with FERC for quite some period of time. And uh, it was not too long after they filed their petition for uh, this permit uh, because I was designated as an affected landowner because their pipeline and their directional drilling goes through my property and uh, uh, right at the Swanee River crossing. So I was on their list of affected persons and received notice of it. Uh, after I received that, uh, not when I was able to get to it, given work demands and travel demands, I contacted uh, Lisa Prather. Um, and let her know that I had a number of areas that I felt their information provided to DEP was inaccurate and inconsistent with the facts and inappropriate based upon the experiences I've had with FERC and based upon what I had reviewed. And I submitted to her uh, extensive documentation per her instructions um, and then waited a period of a month or two and looked at the site and found that she had not included any of my materials in the DEP record. I communicated again uh, with her, and this is all in emails which are marked as exhibits, and uh, told her I was having trouble uploading stuff on the site, and also told her that I was concerned that she had not included any of my submittals uh, in the DEP record that raised issues over the quality of the work being done by Sable and their experts. Uh, she informed me that she had supplied my materials to people at the Florida Geologic Survey to see if, uh, to, to determine whether what I was saying was accurate. Uh, and at some point thereafter, she included 
uh, I believe, one of my communications in the record, but deleted or did, I could not find where they included any of the attachments that showed supporting information about the problems that were occurring. Did you invite the DEP representative onto your land? Uh, not the DEP representative, because I was, uh, I never had any communication with anyone but Ms. Prather. I invited personnel from Sable. I had quite a difficult time with Sable. Every time I heard from them, I would get demands to have access to my property on short notice, typically anywhere from 24 to 48 hour notice. Uh, I had a number of fights where I had to tell them if they went on my property, uh, I would uh, I was serving a trespass notice because they took the position they could come on and off any time they wanted. calls for hearsay and frankly relevance. The, 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 the answer is this. I've been... Uh, yes, sir. sir, if you can pause a second. Let's, let's keep this to relevant matters. Uh, and that's, that really has to be true. There's no requirement in order to get an ERP that you pass some kind of um, friendliness or contact, friend, you know, user friendly left, uh, threshold or something. Uh, should I narrow my answer? You should narrow it to, well, you should wait till he asks you a question and then your answer should be relate to what you see as. Uh, either errors related to the environment. Yes. Yes. Sable was given multiple opportunities to be shown uh, karst uh, biological issues, including gopher tortoises, um, and uh, I never offered that to DEP. I was not aware they needed to be involved in that. Um, I, I did ask that the Florida Fish and Game or Florida Wildlife Commission employees come in and check behind Sable on the gopher tortoise issues and other animal issues because they filed stuff that was inaccurate and inconsistent with what I was telling them as they did on karst issues. Objection, that calls for inclusion, inaccurate, and complete. He's well, a standing you witness. Are, are there gopher tortoises on your land? Yes, sir, there are. And after they, the FERC ended up ordering them to go back and redo some of their work after my filings. And, Objection, uh, calls for hearsay. Uh, Judge, I'd also object that it's not responsive to the question that was asked. There, there are. No. Yes, and they now have admitted that in writing. All right. Did you submit a, a, a correspondence to, to FERC? To both the FERC and DEP, yes. All right. I'd like to uh, find a copy of that. Exhibit C. Exhibit, uh, C. Exhibit C. I have a copy of Exhibit C, which was submitted to FERC. Copies of it were also submitted to the DEP and provided to Sable both times. There were other additional documents that were submitted to both FERC and DEP and Sable. Um, addressing these same issues. Yes. Which we're objecting is hearsay. All right. C is in the smaller, smaller book. notebook, Judge. There's two books. This is the little book. A lot of helpers here. <laughs> we're team. <clears throat> A little over 30 years. And you mentioned you own other property. What is uh, other property that you own? I have a claim on relevance. Right. Uh, the gentleman's on the witness stand. Maybe his answer will tell us what he's got. I own a home, rental property, um, uh, an interest in an office building, and things of that nature. This, this is the, the property we're talking about, which is actually titled. TSE Plantation LLC is the 900 to 1,000 acres impacted by the pipeline uh, in Swanee County. And, and I'm the principal of that company. The only two owners are myself and my wife. And are you a member of uh, Walls Coalition? I, I joined Walls this past year. Thank you. And as part of your membership of Walls, uh, 
uh, last little differently. When, when you draft letters such as Exhibit C that we, we're going to look at soon, I'm sorry, we'll strike that. Let's go to Exhibit C. Yes, sir. Do you recognize that document? Yes, sir, I do. And did you prepare that document? Yes, I did. Is that your typewritten signature from page five? Yes. <laughs> All righty. In the exhibits to this document? Yes, sir. Uh, did you uh, attach those exhibits? I did. And did you submit this document to the uh, United States Federal Energy Regulation Commission? I did. I also submitted it to DEP and SABLE. All right. And Your Honor, I would ask uh, to admit this document into evidence because our witness is here and it's part of the uh, respondent's record, which would be the public record. Object to the hearsay, sir. You're saying hearsay amongst the, the attachments. He's a, he's a okay. fact witness who testified to it. In response, Your Honor, we then walk through the attachments. We have a stipulation for admission of official documents. Exhibit A is prepared by Swanee River Water Management District. Exhibit B appears to be prepared by Carlo Entrix, the employee of a respondent, Sable Trail. Well, and I think there's been some markings, or maybe some additional insertions. Yes, the commentary is mine. So it's not our document. First of all, let me ask if, if uh, respondents uh, dispute, are, are you disputing what's in these uh, two government reports? Or are you just saying you don't like it because you didn't write it? Uh, for purposes of the hearsay objection, it's a document that he didn't prepare. Additionally, the press release makes reference to a dietary study, but doesn't actually have any information about the dietary study. It's simply a release of public information, but not the actual study itself. And that is, uh, you mean you refer to Exhibit A? Oh, oh yeah. Oh, the Swanee River attachment is dated even prior to the actual application being submitted, so a question of relevancy as it relates to the project. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's hearsay. I'm trying to figure out whether it's admissible. Again, Your Honor, there's a predicate on some of these. Your Honor. <laughs> I got to hear from the council. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you. Um, first, Your Honor, uh, can we uh, have a ruling on the letter itself? Uh, council seems to be challenging exhibits, and I'd like to take them one by one if we may. Well, first of all, it can come in if, if it's not. The truth of the matters asserted, just be, it can show that he uh, made comments to the agency, uh, so, you know, in this in this process. So it can come in for that. But if you want, uh, if there's certain uh, technical allegations in here, um, we'd have to we'd have to deal with those separately. Understood, and of course the witness is here to be cross-examined on, on the letter. But um, you want to not it, just it for the like letter service, it, but it sounds. It looks like he, in large part, is summarizing what's attached to the letter. Right. We also would like to show the activity of this Walls Coalition member with regard to his affected property, and that he is uh, uh, indeed taking an active uh, role as a member, which is not relevant for purposes of standing. Yeah. Uh, there's two elements of standing. One is that a person has substantial interest, and the other is that, is that there's a substantial interest for the affected 
when you bring your persons forward to show that they're uh, members who have substantial interests, uh, I don't, I don't want to hear about their concerns. I just want to hear about their substantial interest. He has established a substantial interest, which is the ownership of property affected by the pipeline. I don't want to hear about his concerns unless he's, because that's, that's not relevant. So after substantial, there's two elements, as I said, substantially, he's a, a person with substantial interest, landowner, substantial interest. Now, the next part of the equation is the affected. Affected requires uh, expert testimony, generally, not always, but generally, about what's going to happen that could affect that substantial interest. So uh, when you bring your witnesses forward uh, for standing that are lay, pe lay people, all they have to do is identify their substantial interest. And from them, I don't want to hear about their concerns about effects. Now, you can know about gopher tortoises from observation, and you don't have to be an expert to know what a gopher tortoise is, or a cardinal, or a blue jay, and you can say that he's seen gopher tortoises or knows about their presence. Uh, some of their behavior, biological behavior, and needs and stuff may be beyond his expertise. Would probably require expert testimony. So it's a little that I'll allow. Okay. Right. So just uh, I, I don't. It, to the extent this letter involves a lot of discussion of what he, uh, the things he think will, will happen that would require extra testimony, uh, they can't, can't come in as competent testimony in those parts. So that's why, I'm, that's why we're dealing with this hearsay, because he attaches to his letter uh, technical information supplied by uh, put out by one is Swanee River Water Master District. Uh, actually, both two of them are Swanee River, maybe all of them. Well, my concern, Your Honor, and this is just one example, we have quite a few from Mr. Edwards, is, is uh, because he owns uh, approximately a thousand acres in this area, because he is a, uh, a, a learned person, and he does know the law, and he has done extensive research on matters that affect his land, and he knows his land, perhaps better than anyone else, that I thought would help qualify him as an expert, that that would be uh, admissible. And if it's not, I mean, we, we couldn't move to qualify him as an expert. But as to his own land, it's a, it's a, big, it's a uh, substantial piece of land that is uh, affected by this property, by, by this project. So uh, I appreciate that this substantial interest is established. We'd also like to show uh, how he is affected. You know, we actually asked him to court if we can do that without qualifying him as an expert. Well, I think I tried to describe the parameters for that. Uh, there are certain things any long-time Florida resident would know without, being, without having to be qualified as an expert. And uh, other things where they would have to be qualified. So. This is probably some of both, and uh, we're not going to be able to just bring all this in wholesale for the truth of the matter asserted. We're going to have to deal with these individual allegations. Well, I'd like to uh, try and uh, um, introduce Mr. Edwards as an expert and ask him some questions. Hopefully that part of the Well, if you can lay a foundation for his expertise, I'll uh, consider it. Uh, you had what, what was the... You he's listed, listed as expert. He just says expert? Well, he's listed as expert. Right. He simply says expert. There's no actual identification for a field of expertise. So let me just stop it. Well, yeah, this is a unique, some would say weird <laughs> proceeding, and uh, we'll have to <clears throat> roll with the punches. So I'll, I will ask the questions that require, require an expert. You have to lay a foundation for his expertise. Mr. Edwards, um, where did you obtain your law degree? I obtained my law degree uh, from Stetson University College of Law. 
in Florida. Yes. Has the whole 30 years of practice, your law practice been in Florida? It, it has been in Florida, although I've also tried cases in other states. Does yes. this mean you're going to ask for uh, questions of a legal nature? No, no, I'm going to ask them about knowledge of the cars and the lime and the gopher tortoise. It's just okay. established that he's uh, educated in Florida. Um, when did you first start to uh, conduct your own independent research into karst and limestone issues? As the owner of the property, when I became owner, which was approximately a year before I got notice of this potential uh, incursion on the property, uh, I did some work relating to educating myself on the extensive karst uh, features on the property. Uh, after I got the notice, I have done extensive study which creates a base of knowledge which is far superior to that of a layperson. Um, and included among the things that I've used to study, there are extensive educational materials on the DEP website, uh, including educational materials they supply for schools uh, relating to karst, karst structures, uh, uh, underground water conduits, uh, items of that nature. Same type of information is available through the Florida uh, Geologic Survey and the same kind of information is available through the Suwannee River Water Management District. I've also uh, reviewed at least some documents referenced from their sites that are educated, that are peer-reviewed documents relating to karst, uh, karst terrain, uh, the impact of drilling and things of that nature, uh, the risk to the aquifer, uh, and I have likewise reviewed the materials submitted by Sable Trail and have reviewed some of the references in their materials. Have you uh, consulted any uh, other authoritative sources besides those you just referenced? I believe I've summarized the authority, authoritative sources, though I have probably looked at some other stuff too. I can't recite it at this moment. Your Honor, I, I would uh, move to admit Mr. Edwards as, as an expert on, on this, uh, on how the karst and the limestone issues and the um, the wetland issues affect uh, his property and, and the surrounding properties based on the independent research he has done and based on the fact that he's a 30-year learned uh, Floridian who typically conducts research as a regular practice of his uh, business. Yes. What is your undergraduate degree in, sir? My undergraduate degree is in economics. So you don't have a degree in geology, right? I am not a, I am not a degree geologist, that is correct. And you don't have a degree in ecology? Uh, I do not have a degree in ecology. Or wetland sciences? No, sir, I do not. Or pocket-like structure management? I do not. I and have educated myself in some of those areas, but I am not degree. And you purchased this property in 2013, correct? I, that is correct. I purchased it approximately August of 2013. And so you said earlier on direct that you became started to become knowledgeable of issues relating to your property when you acquired it. So you've only been doing it for two years, correct? Uh, that's approximately correct. And you said you referred, you know, you, you've gone online and looked at materials and, and, and and then you've gone to the DEP website, but uh, specifically, what have you reviewed? Uh, I have to reviewed, become knowledgeable about Carson. Weapons. I have reviewed the educational materials on both the DEP website and the uh, Florida uh, or the Swanee River Water Management District. There are also materials on the Florida Geologic site. There's an entire entire site on each of those sites devoted to springs, and there are educational materials, including uh, materials that were created by the Florida Speleological Association that are used for uh, school children on up and educating people on karst terrain, uh, water conduits, the cave conduits, uh, and, and items of that nature, and the risks that exist to those, those items. And so you're currently practicing law, correct? Yes, sir, I am. And your primary residence is in Jacksonville, correct? My primary residence is in Jacksonville. I own the property in Suwannee County. Is there a residence on your property? Uh, there are cabins on the property. How often do you visit your property? I would say during some parts of the year it's uh, weekly for uh, one or more days, and during some parts of the year it's every week or two. Sir, I read a lot of books about NASA. It doesn't make me an expert in astrophysics. I just don't think he's qualified in to, to discuss opinions related to technical fields concerning geology, ecology, outside of his direct observation for a property that he only visits part-time. I'm not going to allow any testimony from this witness 
about karst geology. Okay. I may allow some questioning regarding natural systems if you lay a, found, a sufficient foundation for his knowledge of them. Thank you, Anna. With regard to Exhibit C, the letter you wrote January 29, 2015? Yes. Uh, what was your intent in preparing this letter? My intent was to let uh, the uh, authorities, both the DEP and FERC, know that uh, there were <coughs> items that had been omitted by Sable Trail in submitting their requests for permits that were uh, omitting crucial information based upon their own words in their own documentation. They submitted a karst mitigation plan and they submitted uh, a plan that addressed harsh terrain uh, that identifies areas they need to stay away from. And by submitting this documentation, I was bringing to the attention of both FERC and DEP that the area surrounding the crossing that impacts my property is directly falls within the areas that they themselves in their documentation say they should stay away from. Can you uh, tell me what document you're referring to specifically where they say they should stay away from that? Uh, yes, in their environmental impact uh, statements, they have uh, uh, a number of different documents that address these issues, but um, there is a karst mitigation document, and there is a document that is entitled Char Characterizations of Karst Terrain. And when you read those documents and you compare it to the terrain here and the terrain in the Wiklacuchi, it is clear that they are... Objection calls for scientific opinion. Comparing geology. And, by the way, I think it's gone beyond as you're instructed as to substantial interest in now reaching into a tax testimony. Certain geology. Yeah, we we haven't really resolved, <coughs> thanks to my edging, whether we're going to allow this these, uh, the attachments. In. Uh, generally, uh, I, something that something that's put out, the general information that's put out by. Uh, Florida agency like this kind of river or some, you know, the public can obtain on their website. Uh, I usually let that in. If, 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 uh, if the applicant wants to disagree with it, uh, there's something in there, you know, they can come forward and show me that something is, uh, is an error, and I'll give it less weight if there's no sponsor. Uh, generally, I don't think we should start with the idea that the information that the agents, state agencies put out is, is uh, a bunch of errors or lies and, and, and shouldn't come in. Uh, it, should, it should simply be explained away. I think there's a problem. It doesn't go, it's too general, and this case is too more specific. Uh, I'm, a little, I'm a little trouble with this, though, because it, uh, it looks like. The specific thing about karst features of the natural gas pipeline, where, where did that come from? Right. Um, are you asking me or them, Judge? Not you. Uh, <laughs> most, the council. Uh, I don't even, yes, I'm, Your Honor, and that is the uh, information that the witness is relying on. Uh, Just tell me where it introduced it. Who introduced it? Your Honor, I'm a in what document are you referring to? This car features in hydrogeology. Is that? Oh, yeah. that's E. Oh, okay. Sorry. Okay, I'm sure. Let's get back to your attachments to C. We've got first. Uh, attachment A. Falmouth Dive Trace reveals unknown connectivity. Put out by the Swanee River Water Management District. One page. That's my concern, Your Honor. It's simply a press release, it's not the actual study. I'm going to try to bootstrap something from the study through that press release. I'm going to show the what 
what the witness relied on for drafting this letter. So I can give it whatever weight. Not to give the same weight the witness did, but I'm trying to request that the testimony of the witness. Just because relied someone on. relied on something doesn't make it admissible. I'm trying to do what this is now. <coughs> if it will assist, I can simply tell you where each exhibit came from. I'm going to just take it on space that I it's got a small river uh, ID on it. And then B looks like part of something. Yes. Actually, it's got a cardinal entrix. It's, it's from uh, their document filed in their environmental impact statement entitled Characterization of Car Sensitive Areas. With additional doctored material put onto it. With my observations on it. That is correct. And I think those observations would call from the Where do you see those uh, observations? There's a box. There's a red box. Uh, Oh, mine's not right. This is a, is the one that says confluence of Swanee and Fukushima. It's right here on the map. Where else is there anything else? And I see on later on we've got So, Exhibit C is from a Swanee River Water Management document and it identifies the springs that weren't identified in their filings. And then Exhibit B is uh, scientific data relating to the springs involved and that it's excerpted to the springs involved. These are all partial documents. The issue as to the incompleteness in addition to the hearsay. Hearsay from third parties who are not in the proceedings in the US. Again, Your Honor, we're not uh, moving to admit the exhibits. Just asking the witness questions about the letter. All right, here's what I'm willing to do. <clears throat> I'm going to allow this uh, list to come in, uh, including exhibits. The, uh, on my record copy, I'm crossing out the box comments in the witness, which are not part of the exhibit, and they're not going to be considered an exhibit. And uh, anything any opinions expressed in the letter itself about parts geology uh, are not taken for the truth of the matter to serve it. Simply him passing along information he wants the agency to consider. Thank you. Well, um, Mr. Edwards, I had asked you more uh, with regard to a statement you just made that the Sable Trail's own documents uh, caution about avoiding the karst terrain. Can you tell me which document that's contained in? Uh, yes, they're contained both in their karst mitigation filings with both the agencies, and they're also uh, contained within uh, the karst characterization. Uh, they're actually filed one right after the other within their documentation. Again, just so the court. That this is the uh, characterization of car sensitive areas that's part of the Cardano filings with both agencies. Um, and then there is a karst mitigation plan um, which has disappearance. They're filed, I think, one right after another within the, the materials. And I, they're both listed as exhibits uh, by WWALS. They're also listed as exhibits by, the, by uh, Sable. Um, and they both contain language that I, I highlighted uh, and supplied to DEP and the FERC identifying the language that was relevant to excluding uh, the pipeline from crossing in this area. The course mitigation plan, Your Honor, is Exhibit U. Notebook. Jump, where are we jumping to now? Oh, 
What was the question that was? The, the question was uh, the documents that Mr. Edwards relied on, uh, rather was uh, that reflected the statements that Sable Trail and its publications state that the karst uh, terrain should be avoided. And I believe his response was that Exhibit U is the karst mitigation plan. Uh, not that we're leaving Exhibit C. My understanding is Exhibit C is admitted into evidence, but not for the truth of the matter asserted. With regard to the attachments are Attachments are removed for the truth of the matter to serve the attachments without the comments that the witness made in those attachments. Thank you. His letter is not admitted for the truth of any opinions asserted in regarding carstiology. It simply stands as his evidence of his contact with the agency the of this information. Thank you, Your Honor. Did you receive a response to your letter, Exhibit C? Well, the um, FERC ordered in response to my, uh, the issues I raised in this filing that has been marked and two other filings, FERC ordered uh, um, the, uh, and I'm not sure how they're referred to in this, I guess it's the petitioner who is seeking the permit. Uh, to go back and redo some of their studies, uh, which related both to karst terrain, to gopher tortoises, animals, and other things. And um, they have filed a response, uh, which I believe is the... Uh, Judge, if I might interrupt, I mean, you're talking about communications with FERC, and FERC has nothing to do with this proceeding. It's irrelevant. <coughs> I think it is relevant, uh, but it sounds like it, it, it would constitute an admission of uh, Sable Trails, not cars, uh, and but I, I but from what you're you seem to be suggesting that this is a document that's not part of the DEP application file. This is, this is outside the DEP application. Right? It's still, it's still, it's still it can be relevant and visible, despite the fact it's not in the DEP application file. But um, if it has to do uh, anything regarding environmental impacts in the area affected by the affected uh, members of walls, design. Uh, so that has to be made clear, and then it, it might be admissible. Just a little clarity, Your Honor. I mean, the, the mitigation plan that's referenced here in the CARS uh, study have already been admitted as part of the joint exhibit. That's why I asked about that. Uh, yeah. Maybe something that's already part of this record. Yes. Yes, sir. And, and, and they then filed a response addressing the concerns I had raised. I had gone through and charted first terrain, including sinkholes, open uh, holes that open to the aquifer on my property and in proximity of the pipeline, um, the proposed pipeline. So I had gone through and charted distances and uh, supplied pictures, supplied pictures of gopher tortoise holes, etc. in all these filings I did with both agencies uh, and identified karst terrain that they still have excluded from their documentation by personally walking it and identifying it. Okay. All right, that's not opinion testimony. That's, that's uh, eyewitness testimony. I mean, observations of a landowner of features on his own property. It, you know, there's only, you can only go so far, but but uh, I can, I as a Floridian can recognize a uh, line of stone visible at the ground surface, for example. Uh, so maybe some of that can be permitted. So if this this witness wants to tell us where on his property he sees what he thinks are car features. All right, and yes. I think it may be helpful, Your Honor. We have Exhibit B, which is a, a map broken down to eight and a half by 12 pages, but we also have a, a poster of it. No, uh, this is a different poster. Okay. Uh, what I was referring to then is Exhibit TB. Yeah, B, which I believe is Tom, their response. Tom, Tom Boy. 
Okay, let's let's go back. I hope this doesn't create uh, problems, but I really think we got to move away from these letters, especially the ones that go two letters. I just never had a case where we had an exhibit B and. Uh, so I don't think I've admitted anything from petitioners yet. Have I? Uh, even if it's C. It's well, CBs. Other than C. Right? Even if But no one here? They're, they're in here somewhere? They're in there, you want. Okay. As I said, Mark, Mark, you make a note. Yeah. Exhibit VL is petitioners 1. Petitioners B N is petitioners two. And, and C now is petitioners three. Thank you. I think we greatly assist the, the court witness can refer to uh, several maps, some of which are uh, contained on exhibit plaintiff's uh, petitioner's four, which the court will find under TB. TB? TB like tomboy. Oh, TB. Uh, the, the cover of it, it says attachment M, but it's, it's uh, petitioner's four. And there's a response to email comments from Tom Edwards, uh, responses to Tom Edwards. And it includes uh, dialogue and some maps and drawings. Just asked me about is it the eight page and it looks like this. Referring to a, it has a one mile circle on it. Well, Mr. Edwards, did you in fact receive what appears to be was marked as a petitioner's report? Uh, I ultimately did receive that, yes. And who did you receive it? From. Well, Sable, Sable served it on me, served it on FERC, and I don't, I can't say whether they served it on DEP or not. Okay. Uh, with this being the Sable's document, I would move for it to be admitted as a petition is for It's already been admitted. It's already in. It's already it's already in. in. All right, so it's already in. Thank you. And I... You pointed to uh, the uh, drawing on page six? Yes. You got a blow up of it there? Yes. Earlier, you directed us to page eight. Uh, actually, this is page this is page eight of the of the document. Okay. Uh, so they're, unfortunately, they're unnumbered. Yeah, sure. <coughs> the, the copies I have are. Okay. So we're all on six, right? Are we on six or eight? <laughs> <laughs> the one I have blown up is page eight. Is it, is it figure one or figure three? It figure is figure three. three. Figure three. Then that's it. Got me. It is numerically eight from the front. All right. Is your property? Yes, it is. Do you want me to show you where the property is in relation to the pipeline? Your Honor. I this reference is a noted advocate. However, in this case, he is a witness <laughs> and not an advocate. And so I would, I would hope that we could have question and answer as opposed to advocacy from the witness. Guide the witness, Mr. Walsh. Mr. Edwards, <laughs> the figure three, page eight, petitioner's four. Uh, would you agree that that is a close up view? The location of proposed crossing of the Swanee River of the Sable Transmission Pipeline. It is. And is your understanding that that 
circular drawing is a one mile radius of the crossing? That's how it's labeled. Do you see in that drawing the numbers one, two, three, and four at different locations? Yes, and those are four of the springs that I had identified that had not been identified. I think one had been identified by them. All right. And Your Honor, at, at this point, just make a foundational objection. You indicated that his, uh, this witness's testimony needs to be specific to his property. There's been no foundation that any of these four springs are actually on his property. Well, without a foundation, that's that is still my ruling. You have to lay a foundation. Uh, so, uh, if I may, uh, Mr. Edwards, are any of the four springs noted on this drawing on your property? Yes, they are. Uh, the spring that is known as Stevenson <coughs> Spring, which is also known as Lime Eater Spring, and you will see both diff two different names referenced in different materials. Um, Stevenson Spring and Lime Eater Spring, L-I-N-E-E-A-T-E-R, are the same spring. It is on my property, and it is a uh, magnitude 2 spring, which is 3% below being a magnitude 1 spring. Objection that calls for expert opinion. Sustained. Uh, this, the information about these 1, 2, 3, 4 springs, did you just get that from one of these other documents put out by the Swanee River Water Management District? Well, I, I'm, I'm familiar with the springs in the area, and they are also documented on the DEP website and Swanee River Water Management, but this particular document is from them. With the, with the numbers on it? Yes, sir. They put the numbers on it. Okay. And they identified these springs, which are four of the seven springs I had identified in my materials. Okay. okay. Mr. How about your answer with regard to the, uh, the volume of water? Where did you get that information? That, that is, the, the answer I just gave is based upon study of information from the DEP and the Swanee River Water Management District that is, that is published and known. Okay, now, I'm not going to allow that. I mean, if you had that, if you produced the Swanee River data or something, uh, like one of these documents attached to uh, Petitioner's 3? Yes, it is there. I included it. Um, that's that's what I was getting at. You just got it from that one of those attached attachments. That and other materials too. I've seen. I've seen. Not, I don't want to know about other materials. Yes, sir. Where, if it came from something from petitioners three, then I don't see any problem simply saying uh, that. If you know, all I'm doing is repeating what's in evidence. It's petition three. Uh, so, did it come from petitioners three? I don't know what petitioner three is. That the, the parse mitigation? That's what previously was labeled C. My letter, so your letter. Your letter. I, my letter, yeah, I, it is in there. Okay. Can I proceed? Yes. Mr. Edwards, let's uh, let's go one at a time. You see uh, what's marked as spring number one is not on your property. Spring number one is not on my property. Okay. Uh, have you? Personally, seen spring number one. It doesn't, I, it, it doesn't matter no? if it's coming from a document <clears throat> that is already in evidence. Huh? We want to establish his personal knowledge. He just, you know, you just take it off the information that Swanee River put out. Take it. There's a spring and you label it. Is spring number two on your property? No, sir. Is spring number three on your property? Yes, sir. It is. Is spring number four on your property? No, sir. Aside from Spring number three, are there any other springs on your property that you're aware of? Springs as defined by Florida law and as defined by their own materials, there are numerous additional springs on my property which I have volunteered to show their personnel and they declined. Um, some of those springs are within the quarter mile uh, uh, area that they say is relevant to these proceedings or just barely out of it. Uh, and there are numerous other uh, sinkholes and karst windows that are open with flowing water going through them that are well within half a mile, which their original documentation said was the relevant space, not the quarter mile. They adjusted it after uh, after some of these proceedings occurred and I challenged what they were doing. That's based on your personal observations? Yes, and I have data points, I have GPS points, I submitted pictures with some of my materials. There are springs, sinkholes, and open karst windows throughout this entire 
treed area and just judge right all through here uh, and there are open karst windows, flowing springs, uh, and there is LIDAR that I supplied to DEP, I supplied to Sable, and I supplied to FERC that shows extensive water flow under this immediate area. And we match that up against their, their, their statements and the karst materials attached to their environmental impact statement. They shouldn't be here. Uh, Mr. Edwards, can you generally uh, inform us where your land is yes. within that circle? Um, you want me to move just a little closer so you all can see it better? To show my land, the, the, the pipeline right here where it crosses the Suwannee River comes onto my land, and, and this line where this upper field is here, if you went straight back to the river, uh, is the property border between me and the Suwannee River State Park. So this down here, Judge, is the Suwannee River State Park, if you see right here. This over here is all Suwannee River State Park. And then all of this and on up through here over to right here and coming across here and then going down here is all my property. And so the pipeline crosses onto my property when it crosses the Suwannee River and it is my side of the fence with the Swanee River State Park, and then it makes a right-hand turn and goes down the Swanee River State Park echo property line. So right here and right here, it is right adjacent to the property line on my side of the fence. Thank you, Mr. Edwards. And, and I, I should mention, because the judge probably doesn't know it, I think everyone else does, this entire piece of property has been under a uh, conservation easement with the Swanee River Water Management District since the 1990s because of the extraordinary and extensive karst and spring formation. Opinion as to characterization, and plus non-responsive, it wasn't a question asked about the ownership status of the property. Mr. Edwards, you have, seen, have you observed any uh, collapsing on your property? Yes. Objection, vague. Can you describe those observations? There are areas that I think, from a geologic standpoint, are referred to as subsidence, where Objection the calls for opinion of geology. Where, where the up, upper crust of the earth is Your Honor, sustain. You sustain the objection, and the witness continues to testify. I'll ask a, another question. Um, have, you observed, have you observed any sinkhole activity on your property? Yes, including in the field uh, adjacent to where they're planning to go, and in this area down here, and the. There are sinks literally all over the place throughout this wooded area, uh, which is within a quarter to half a mile of where they're going. Have you reported those observations to? I, to I reported them to Sable, to DEP, and to FERC, and I offered to take Sable's personnel and personally show them to them, and they declined. Do you know of any uh, knowledge of whether or not your reports were received? Uh, I know for a fact they were received. FERC responded to them. Uh, Lisa Prather confirmed she referred, she received them, uh, although many of them were not included in the DEP record. If we were to move this circle down, based on your observations, further down, let's say further south on your land, would there be a, would it cover more springs? It would, it would uh, include multiple magnitude one springs, uh, which are the largest springs in the state, um, and, but those are not on my property. How is it that you know of the opinion that they're magnitude one springs? Objection, calls for re relevance, and calls for opinion. I'm not sure, what, why are we talking about if, if this is somewhere else? Uh, asking the witnesses based on this. Uh, Observation. Uh, I'm asking about the relevance. Oh, uh, the relevance is why do we need to know somewhere other than where the pipeline is? Well, well, Your Honor, I was suggesting moving this further south that there would be witnesses' testimonies that there's springs not shown on this drawing. We're suggesting it should be moved south. I'm asking the witness if his observations if we went south, say one mile. I'm, I'm asking around. the relevance of it. Well, the relevance is that um, 
the witness's observation is that there are springs in this area that are not uh, being given their due consideration within the permitting process. Maybe it was just the way you asked the question about moving south. You just mean where are these other, where are some other springs that weren't considered? Is that what you really meant? Uh, I apologize, maybe I'll ask a little differently. If, if we move that radius that I don't know if it's an arbitrary radius or not, but the one that's provided is destroying. Right. If we moved it southern, so it still sat, the northern tip of the circle sat on the southern part of your land, yes. would that include more springs? Y yes, it would, including multiple magnet magnitude one springs. As you run, run down the path of the pipeline, it's going to be within the same diameter of multiple magnitude one springs. Uh, and, and uh, based on their documents, they talk about the fact that there are uh, large conduits connecting all of these, including the ones on my property, which present a risk as shown by the fracture trace documentation calls for opinion. they've attached. Your Honor, I would add to that objection that the documents that Sable Trail has submitted and are of record speak for themselves. And this witness's characterization of those documents uh, is only that and is not a concern. A few more questions if I may. Yes. Sir. Is there parse terrain on your property, Mr. Yes, sir. Objection calls for opinion. Based on your, your personal knowledge, your personal observation, there is asking what's there, not yeah. all right. What is he saying that thank you, General? Can, can you describe the terrain of your nine hundred to a thousand acres? Yes, sir. Throughout this area of wooded uh, um, this wooded area surrounding the field they're going to come up on, there are sinkholes throughout it. Uh, and there are open sinkholes with water bubbling up from the aquifer. Uh, there are sinkholes that are larger than this room where you see water coming up from the bottom of, on one side from the aquifer and then going back down uh, into the aquifer on the other side. Um, they're what are called open car splinters. And, and I have uh, one that I call Slice Sink, which is right on the border, about a quarter mile from where they're going to be. That uh, you have a, a opening uh, that is probably the size of that table in front of you that runs probably two thirds of the length of the room uh, and then goes back down underground uh, with an active flow of significant amount of water. And that is, that is right at the quarter mile borderline. Those are the kinds of things I've tried to offer to show them. In the field itself, I have areas of depression where the, the top level of soil has dropped and the start of a sinkhole is occurring, and the same thing is happening in areas over here. That's the kind of thing I've tried to offer to show their personnel when they decline. Mr. Edwards, when you say they are going to come up on, you've used that term a few times, uh, who are you referring to as they? Well, if Sable Trail takes this pipeline through, they're going to do directional drilling up into this field based upon their, what they've proposed, and they're going to then be trenching. Um, you have to trench deep enough to cover a three-foot pipe, so they're going to be trenching somewhere down in the range of nine, ten feet uh, because they have to get the pipe down in the ground and cover it with a certain level of soil. Um, when you say they're going to cut them up on, what do you mean by that? I, I'm not sure what you're asking. They're going to come up on, are you referring to... The term of uh, that the parlance they say they are going to come up on. What do you mean by come up on? Do you mean come up I, out of the ground or just I mean approach? I'm not, I'm not understanding. Okay, then, then uh, I'll strike that question. Okay. <laughs> you made a few references to uh, information that you've shared not appearing in, in documents. Uh, uh, are you suggesting any anything by that? Well, I, I, I know for a fact that we, we specifically told them they're uh, kestrels on the site, which is a uh, threatened species. There are Sherman Jackson fox. calls for opinion status of species. Sherman. So were you, you've, you've observed, this is something you've observed? Yes, sir, and have pictures. Um, likewise, I have pictures of Sherman's fox squirrel. Uh, I do not have pictures of certain fox squirrels, but we have seen them, and I have taken numerous <laughs> pictures of uh, a gopher tortoise burrows 
um, and I had shared with their personnel that all of those were on site. They then filed reports saying that while the terrain was consistent with them, they saw no evidence of anything. Uh, I, had, I, I had let them know that they were literally right on the fence line that's a part of what they take, they're proposing to take. And if they had walked that fence line, there is no way they could have missed those, those gopher tortoise burrows. Based upon my complaints, uh, they were instructed to go back and redo it. They then refiled saying, yeah, there are seven active gopher tortoise burrows and others that are abandoned. So what I've said was absolutely correct. Um, and I have the same concern about the karst terrain. They've they simply closed their eyes and... Objection, and calls for opinion. From what I have seen, their filings are inaccurate as to Objection, what they have done. Objection, now you can testify narrative. Overall, it's just talking about these features not being... From what I have seen and tried to show them, the documents that they have filed do not uh, identify uh, sinkholes, open karst windows, active springs that they could have been shown but chose not to see. And aside from uh, amending their findings to show the presence of uh, some gopher tortoise burrows, were there any other amendments to your satisfaction with regard to findings you reported? That, well, they amended uh, regarding gopher tortoise burrows. They filed a response regarding the karst terrain issues, which didn't address some of the major issues I had raised, including the conduits that are shown on LIDAR, which I had given everyone. Uh, and the conduits that have to be calls for associated. Well, what I. Your, your Honor, what is he talking about? He's talking about conduits and evaluations based off of life data. Well, I think all, all he's trying to convey is that he told them, he showed them things. Uh, as far as his window goes, we, we don't have a foundation for him to have. Uh, accurately characterize it as such because you know no no competent person has yet explained what a karst window is and it's not a layperson term. Uh, his his description of uh, what he calls sinkholes, uh, open fissures, uh, I think that's just observational and is allowable. And what I've seen and tried to show them were open sinkholes with water flowing through them. I I think DEP information and, and other things identify those as open karst windows. So, based upon the education I've received in the area, um, those they have not identified a number of those things. And when they responded to my submittals, they did not respond on some of the key areas that were raised in their own documents about staying away from those that type of terrain because there are large underground water conduits that they can pierce with their directional drilling. Um, and some of that is actually shown on the LIDAR that I submitted. Did you have correspondence with um, Brad Floyd at DEP? I don't believe I had correspondence with Brad Floyd. How about with uh, Lisa Prather? With Lisa Prather, Prather yes sir. Did you raise the uh, question of uh, LIDAR? Not being available to the for the entire route? I, I raised, I raised, I supplied LIDAR for this area. Uh, did you raise the issue as to why the EP did not have it for the entire area? Uh, I don't recall whether I specifically raised a question on that or not. Uh, I did at one point try to get LIDAR for a larger area and was unable to. What were your attempts to, when you say try to get from, from whom? Uh, initially from the Swanee River Water Management District to assist me in getting the LIDAR covering my property. Do you know if Sable Trail has LIDAR? Uh, I'll strike a little differently. Have you seen relevance. LIDAR readings from Sable Trail's property? I'm sorry. Relevance. With regard to... Wait the, a second. I, I, don't, I don't know why there's some objections about this. Uh, you know, we haven't established yet. I guess maybe you're going to try to establish that uh, one should have been used, but this witness can't do that. Um, I don't know where you're going with this. Uh, I was just asking with regard to his property, and he raised it in his uh, answer to his prior question. Right, so why are we still on it? I he, have a... He said there was some LIDAR available, and he tried to make it available. All right. I have nothing further from the statement. I'm pretty frustrated on it. Right. Mr. Prather, I'm going to 
Trainers, are you personally a member of Wallace? Yes, um, I, I, I filed both personally and on behalf of TSE, LLC, TSE Plantation LLC and sent them three or four times the admission check. And how much was that check? Um, it is somewhere between 500 and 750. I'd have to look back at my checkbook to make sure. And is the membership perpetual or? Uh, I don't recall the term of the membership. I'd have to look. You testified earlier that you identified numerous types of features on your property and then you went out and identified. Did you personally go out and identify those features? Yes, sir, I did. And, and they're also in, identified in the environmental statement associated with my property that was done when the conservation easement was put on it. And I've supplied that to everyone also. No further questions. Steve, do you have any questions? Do you uh, personally own the piece of property that uh, we've been discussing, or is it owned by the corporation? As I said earlier, it's owned by TSE Plantation LLC. I am the principal of that entity, uh, so I, I own the entity and, and the property. So you own the shares of the entity? I, I own, it is, a, it is a limited liability company, so it's a little different than a corporate entity. Okay, so it's not TSC Plantation Inc., it's TSC Plantation LLC. I believe that is correct. And are you the only member? Uh, myself and my wife, I'm the principal member. Okay, that's all. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to take a five minute break. I appreciate y'all letting me go out for it. Thank you. 